Hello, everyone. Welcome to 10 in 18, you know, series, life, career, and business optimization lesson length, and still learning in 18 years. You know, I, it's, it's, I can't believe, you know, it's been 18 years since you know, we started workforce, you know. We started in 2014, and it's, it's grown beyond, in fact, my wildest dream. Sometimes when I look at the organization, I just marvel, you know, at what we've been able to achieve, you know, myself and my colleagues in 18 years. So when I was asked by one of my colleagues to share top lessons, you know, I've learned in 18 years for our 18 year anniversary, you know, I decided to share top 10 lessons you know, I've learned over the past 18 years, but I'm still learning them. So some of them are, to be honest, aspirational. I need to be candid. Okay. So I think it was Bill Gates that said most people overestimate what they can do in one year and underestimate what they can do in 10 years. You know, that's a, that's one of his famous quotes, you know, and 18 years, uh, it, it's, it's been, it's been, it's been an amazing journey, so to speak. You know, we've learned a lot, a lot, you know, and, and we've also made a lot of mistakes, you know, but one of the things, one of, probably one of the biggest lessons for me, you know, which I think you should have for your notes is this, okay? The comfort zone is supposed to keep your life safe, but what it really does is keep your life small. So if we didn't get out of our comfort zone, you know, and this has been our story, our journey as a company, we always get out of our comfort zone. We started originally as a recruitment, as an a recruitment and assessment firm, okay? Purely, that was what we were doing. And then we felt that, look, these are comfort zones. So we step up, we started offering learning, you know, and then from there, we step up, we started offering strategy, core consulting. We had some major projects that we took off big multinational project because we just really, really dedicated ourselves and pushed ourselves to just get out of our comfort zone. We started outsourcing, you know, we went into facility business. We've just, you know, been pushing ourselves, you know, and that is part of why, you know, we're where we are today. I still think we can do better, you know, for me, you know, I've seen enough to know that we can still do better, but I'm also, you know, I have huge gratitude. You know, I'm grateful for how far we've come. Okay. So, in the process of growing the business, you know, I've made mistakes a lot. You know, in fact, you can honestly say that I've made all the mistakes in the books and then some more. I'm sure I've made some mistakes that have never been documented before. You know, that's how, you know, it's been. You know, and I have some regrets. You know, there, are, look, there's things I could have done. You know differently I, I you know i can be very idealistic that no yes so there are some things i can be very very rigid on especially when it comes to you know investment in personal development and work ethic you know those are my kryptonite when it comes to my relationships you know with clients and even colleagues once i see that you, are, you don't care enough you know to invest in yourself and grow you know, it, it's, it's, I don't, I don't handle it very well. Let me just put it that way, you know? So for some people out there, you know, in the community that have rubbed off funds, you know, I say, well, it is what it is, you know? And, and regrets are okay, you know? So I'm not going to sit here and say that I don't have some regrets along the way. Maybe I could have done some things differently. Maybe I should have been more diplomatic you know rather than be brutal you know whatever i used to have ask people a question do you want me to be brutally honest or do you want a diplomatic response and then they'll say they want me to be brutally honest and then i'll be brutally honest and then they'll still be upset you know problem will start you know so you know but regrets are okay i'm not going to spin whatever basically i could have done some things better but one of the things that i realized very very early is that failure is not a sin you know if the in fact failure to learn from failure is probably the biggest thing of all so in 18 years i've learned a lot but those lessons are where why i'm here today you know when people are afraid of failure i try to tell them that eh, that's actually the ingredients that you need to be successful you know so don't because of fear of failure not do what you need to do because the people that are making progress get, getting ahead are there every day all day making 
mistakes and then learning from it and then going forward. So failure and regrets don't define us. They definitely do not define me. You know, the lessons I've learned are profound and invaluable in my own opinion. And my hope with sharing, you know, this knowledge is to inspire you, you know, to in the hope that you take some of the lessons, adapt it to your contest. You know, it might not work for you the way it worked for me ex exactly, but these lessons are profound, you know. So the only thing I can do is to attempt to do what mentors are supposed to do, basically, which is to turn decades into days. Okay, so if that is all I achieve, if I can through this lesson, get some people to just rethink some things or make little micro changes to how they approach, you know, the, either their life, their business or career, then I will have been very, very satisfied. So again, once again, thank you very much. I'm so grateful for this opportunity. These lessons are profound for me. They've, they've been what they call future bending insights, you know, and I've gained so much and I wish to impact as much as possible. So buckle up, you know, get ready, get your pen and paper ready, you know, let's go on this ride together. So, so let's get started. You know, one of my favorite quotes is a quote from the Eastern part of Nigeria that said that a, a, a hunter who doesn't have a trusted rifle start shooting from a distance okay going to into the business i know that i don't have a trusted rifle you know i don't have all the qualifications you know i don't i don't belong to the established you know got it because there are inner coppers you know everywhere we go you know in fact i wrote an article on linkedin about the discouragement committee you know who insisted that i have no basis setting up an hr you know consulting firm because i've not been this i've not been that in fact, there was somebody that said that if it becomes a regulatory authority, you know, that oversees businesses or whatever, that the first business, the first order of the day will be to come and close down workforce, you know, and all that. You know, so with that background and knowing where I'm coming from, I just knew I couldn't leave things to chance, okay? So I started learning and developing simple rules, okay? Simple principles, simple whatever that can help me navigate complexity and make the most of any opportunity that I come across. I know that they will be far and in between, so I had to grab it, I had to take hold of it and you know make the most of those opportunities, okay? My favorite, my favorite letter, you know, is letter P, you know, basically. In fact, after a while, I just realized that most things I need to run my business successfully and do well, you know, have some P, you know, basically. First and foremost, I'm very pragmatic. I'm a very pragmatic learner. And most of the things I've done, I'm always looking for what truly works. I don't, story, no, what really works. That's how I learn and that's how I go. So, I'm going to build the lessons I'll be sharing about my around my favorite letter, you know, which is the letter P. You know, I'm going to build the 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 the, the lessons I'll be sharing ar around that. So I've selected ten P's, you know, that I believe that you know, uh, you know, encapsulate the lessons I've learned and some of the things I would like to share, you know, with our community and my colleagues, you know, our clients. Uh, you know basically what what about what i've learned in the last and i'm still learning over the last 18 years so these are the p's the first p is psychology you know i'll go into different explanation of each of the p's the second p is philosophy you know the third p is pursuit fourth is productivity the fifth one is practice Sixth is preparation. You know, I have a deep, deep connection with preparation. Seven is performance. You know, I'm very, very performance oriented. You know, yeah, I am a bit, you know, to the extreme on performance. People, you know, very, very crucial. Places, you know, and what I like to term progress. Okay, so the 10 P's, you know, these 10 P's are, you know, I've just used them as a framework you know to really really share deeply some of the 
biggest, biggest, most powerful lesson. Like I said, insight bending, perception expanding, life changing lessons I've learned in the last 18 years. So let's dive in. The first P is psychology, okay? And that's the first lesson that I want you all to take away, okay? I, like I, I used to be an idealist. I believe that things should go work basically, you know, and for a long time, it was all about the ideology, how things should be, you know, what our employees should behave, how clients should act, you know, how things should work, how the country, you know, what the government should do, a lot, you know, basically. And I realized that that wasn't getting me far, you know? And then I started, you know, using methodology to say, okay, look, what really works? What are those things that make all the difference? You know, and what, what can, how can that, you know, help? And in the process of trying to find out what truly works, you know, the methodology that people are using to succeed in my type of business, you know, or to succeed in business generally, you know, I realized that it's just not about the methodology as well. So the ideology didn't really take me far. The methodology got me a bit far, but it wasn't the whole thing. I found out this that it is the psychology that matters. So the first lesson is, uh, is this, it is not the ideology, believe you me. Ideology can actually limit you, you know, can put a lead, you know, you just be eating your head against whatever because context really matters. So it's not the ideology, it's also not the methodology, the methodology is not enough, it is the psychology that matters most, okay? Here is what I find out, 90% of the game of success is played above the neck, it is here. It is how you think. It is how you think. It is your mind. Your mind is the most po powerful, powerful tool that you have, and how you use it matters a lot. Okay, you have control over one thing and one thing only: your mind, and how you use it matters a lot. Okay, the sky is not the limit; it is the mind. I've seen myself in situation whereby I know it is because I am thinking about some of those things wrongly that. I'm not making progress, okay? So the sky is not the limit, it is the mind. You can do everything and everything, but the mind matters a lot. And this is very, very important. From a single mindset comes a thousand behavior. And those thousand behaviors shape your destiny, okay? Because once you are thinking right, once you have a, a, a single right mindset, you know, it shapes everything else, everything else. You know, one of the major mindsets I have, you know, that I've developed over the course of my business is to take ownership for everything. See, if I employ you as an employee, it is my responsibility to push you to you fulfill your potential. In the process, we'll shout on each other, we'll fight, what, but I own it, I own it. It's what I don't want you to ever come into our organization and leave without feeling that you've been impacted profoundly it does not ordinary impact so i that mindset has helped me a lot in every area i've had clients say that look we're giving you this project because we know that we can go to sleep because it's on your table you know because they know that i will own it and i'll fight clients there was a client we had a strategy session for that came late it was fight. You can't do that. You know, you're the leader of this organization. Everybody, you can't, you know, basically the client has to start apologizing. It's not about just the fact that you pay us, you know, it's so important. So that ownership mindset has taken, you know, me very far as to open doors. I've brought opportunities so big that I can't even be sharing publicly because it will sound like I'm just, you know, bragging, but it works, it works. So a single mindset, you know, shapes everything. And this is it. The simple fact is that the top of the pack, the people that are really, really, they think very differently, which causes them to take profoundly different actions day in, day out. I've had opportunities to relate with a couple of billionaires and how they think is clearly why they're where they are. It's clear, it's not about their ideology, it's not about the methodology, they think differently. So if you want to successfully change your result, one of the lessons I want to leave you with is think you must change how you think first you can't in fact you can't change somebody on you you, you think change how they think so it's all about the psychology so psychology is the very first lesson 